Antimatter is arguably one of the most fascinating things we have in the universe. Or we don't have in the universe. See, anywhere we look, there's matter. Antimatter is almost nowhere to be found. The weird thing is that our theories on physics have no preference for matter over antimatter. Then how did the universe end up with so much matter but no antimatter? The origin of antimatter in our theories can be traced back to Paul Dirac, who predicted the existence of antimatter in 1928. At that time, quantum mechanics was a new toy that has just emerged in the physics playground. Erwin Schrödinger had just came up with an equation that can describe quantum system. However, that equation could only work for slow velocities because it was not compatible with special relativity and therefore it did not take into account the relativistic effects of velocity. Paul Dirac tried to solve this and came up with an equation that can describe quantum systems at any possible velocity. Formally speaking, he merged special relativity with quantum mechanics. The equation is now known currently as the Dirac equation and this same equation introduced us to antimatter. When he used this equation to describe an electron, he found much to his surprise not one but two solutions, one for matter and the other for antimatter. Antimatter in many ways is very similar to normal matter. And if you think about that, it isn't actually antimatter. It behaves perfectly like normal matter. The reason we call it antimatter is because it has the opposite charge of the usual set of matter particles we are familiar with. So it's more like anti-charged normal matter, or if you like it, anti-charged matter. But we'll be using the word antimatter because, well, conventions, and it's not actually that bad as well. For example, electron and anti-electron are almost the same except for the fact that electrons have negative charge while anti-electrons have positive charge. And maybe this is the reason why when matter and antimatter touch, they annihilate each other, which is a fancy way of saying that they destroy each other completely. And the energy they inhibited is released in the form of high energy light. And correspondingly, whenever matter is created from pure energy, a corresponding antimatter also gets created. And we see this all the time, even in empty space. Since according to quantum mechanics, empty space is not really empty. It is filled with energy, which causes matter-antimatter pair to continuously being created and annihilated. So what this tells us is that antimatter and matter is created together and they are destroyed together. And that possesses the problem. If the universe treats matter and antimatter equally, why is the universe composed almost entirely of matter? Where is all of the antimatter? The Big Bang must have produced equal numbers of matter and antimatter. Then why is the current universe only have matter and no antimatter? And if you think about that, the real question is not where antimatter is, but why matter exists. Because as said, whenever matter and antimatter touch, they annihilate each other, leaving behind nothing but pure radiation. So uh, just after the Big Bang, the matter and antimatter should have annihilated each other, leaving behind a universe filled with lots of photons, but no matter or antimatter. Okay, so we really don't know why the universe has so much matter, but no antimatter. But what it really shows is that there is some asymmetry that exists between matter and antimatter. The universe behaves to matter and antimatter very slightly differently. To account for the observed discrepancy, we expect there to be one more matter particle for every one billion matter-antimatter pair, which would mean that most of the matter and antimatter got annihilated away, and whatever we see in the universe is the one that remained for every one billion matter-antimatter annihilations because of the asymmetry. But wait, can't it be the case that antimatter is just very far away? Since matter and antimatter behave similarly when they are on their own, can't it be the case that half of the universe is just antimatter and just got separated away from normal matter? Well, it certainly could be the case. However, unless the separation is a lot, which already requires explanation, we should be seeing radiation coming off whenever matter and antimatter touch each other. Which we, don't, which, we, which we just don't see in good numbers. So it doesn't seem to be the case. That leaves two possibilities. First, either the Big Bang created one more matter particle for every one billion matter-antimatter pair, which seems without explanation. Or second, Big Bang created equal numbers of matter and antimatter as we expect, but something in the universe preferentially eliminated antimatter. And there are some hints as to second possibility might be the key. If there are some processes or mechanisms that treat antimatter and matter differently, we might be able to explain the observed discrepancy. So what could have caused this matter-antimatter asymmetry? Hmm. Well, in 1967, nuclear physicist Andrei Sakharov 
proposed three conditions that will be necessary to start off with equal numbers of matter and antimatter but end up with more matter than antimatter. These are first interactions in the universe to be out of thermal equilibrium which happily our universe fulfills so we don't have any problem there. Second baryon number violation. Baryons are actually particles with three quarks like protons and neutrons both have three quarks and both of these have baryon number plus one that makes anti-proton anti-neutron baryon number negative one. We have never observed the violation of baryon number however it might be uh, violated. And the third one is C and CP symmetry violation about which we have a lot to talk about. These are symmetries that we expected to hold in our universe but the violation of which are essential for you know us to exist. CP stands for charge conjugation and parity symmetry. Charge symmetry says that the universe and laws of physics are invariant under charge transformation which makes sense because there's nothing really different about positive charge from negative charge apart from the fact that these are opposite of each other. Therefore, we expect the universe doesn't treat positive charge or negative charge any differently. If we flip the charges of all the particles in the universe, nothing should really change. Every process and mechanism would work the same way. Parity in addition is the symmetry in mirror transformation. That is, there's nothing really special about left from right, up from down, forward from backwards. That is, like in a mirror, left and right are reversed, yet it looks natural. That is, the laws of physics should remain the same under a mirror transformation. So a CP transformed universe should look and feel exactly like a normal universe if it is CP symmetric. Therefore, you can see why CP symmetry is really a symmetry between matter and antimatter, as flipping the charge of a particle turns it into its antiparticle. The violation of CP symmetry can therefore tell us about the asymmetry that exists between matter and antimatter. For a long time, CP symmetry was thought to be fundamental symmetry of the universe. But then came the weak force. Almost all of the processes in the universe are CP symmetric, except the weak force. In the Cronin and Fitch experiment, CP symmetry has been shown to be violated in the decay of neutral kaons. And as you might know, weak force is the force that causes radioactive decays. Later, CP violation was also observed in the decays of B mesons and D mesons. All of these are particles that are composed of quarks. But that doesn't really solve the problem completely. The thing is that even though we have observed CP symmetry violation, the amount of CP symmetry violation observed is way less to account for the huge matter antimatter imbalance in the universe. We require a lot more CP symmetry violation than currently observed. And surprisingly, no CP violation has ever been observed in the strong force interactions of the universe. But there is a possibility that we might be able to get some CP symmetry violation from leptons. Leptons are a group of particles that include electrons, its heavier versions, and neutrinos. And there are currently a great deal of experiments focusing on CP violation by leptons, especially neutrinos. Neutrinos are arguably one of the weirdest particles of the Stan model and one of their weird features is that they can oscillate between their three different flavors. And if neutrinos violate CP symmetry, we might be able to see differences in the rate of oscillation in neutrinos and antineutrinos. Will this be enough to explain the entire asymmetry between matter and antimatter? We don't know, but if it turns out to be insufficient, additional sources of CP violation will be required and may only be found by physics beyond the standard model. In addition to that, baryon number violation has also never been observed to be violated. Yet, it is essential that it is violated in order for us to explain matter-antimatter asymmetry. So, the mystery of why there is more matter in the universe than antimatter and why do we exist is far from over. For all we know is that we thought that there is no difference between antimatter and matter. But there must be, because if there wouldn't be, we couldn't exist.